Hello and welcome back to the 10 Pine Podcast. We're here as normal with me, Luke, and Beefing. Alright. Um, this episode is sponsored by Santino Fashion, and don't forget to like and subscribe. So we're here with um, James Francis, professional boxer today. How are we, mate? I'm sound, how are you? Good, Decent. fantastic. Life's never been better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's to start off with. Um, should we start off, like, how was your upbringing and that type of thing? Because I think we've got yeah, quite yeah. an interesting story, in not Well, when I was... When I was younger, when I lived with my dad, I lived in Aiton, and um, I was living with my mum and dad, and my mum was getting cheated on by my dad. I have, in fact, I have 11 brothers and sisters, <laughs> only three now with my dad and his other bear, but when I was younger, um, my dad was cheating on my mum, and um, my mum went into the hospital, and then my dad, when we moved to Kirby with my dad, and then my dad um, ended up going to jail, and then... All my brother, well, he was father us in the same. We was all in like you know a naughty school, like you know Newstead or Meadow Park. Yeah, yeah. So we was all in like a naughty, like father us, the oldest, and my older brother was leaving school. But then four of us, my other brother and sisters, got moved into our um, our my brother, my little brother and sister moved like come down to our school. So then we knew that my dad went to jail, and then like all of us just got split up and like went into foster places and that. Yeah. And then it was just in in a foster. I I got put with my brother called John, and um, my brother ended up getting kicked out within like six months because he was just an angry head. <laughs> and then um, I turned around and I ended up moving to a care home in Kirby. Yeah. And then just loads of things was happening. Like like we for like a couple of days, um, I didn't go without. I went without food just because like say like he was a lad. In there, who didn't have a shower for two years? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. literally two years. He didn't have a, his teeth was green. Yeah, like, oh, literally yeah. green. Yeah, like like that's <laughs> up there. And he used to touch the am and all that. And I used to with my OCD and that. I used to think like obviously you didn't want to be eating like am with someone yeah. who had who's got mouldy things. Why weren't he getting a shower on that? I don't know. Just a minging on that. He, like it weren't even that. It was just like. People used to tell him, go and get a shower. And he... <laughs> 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 like, I mean, it was just like, I never told him because it was just, it, it's sly, you know what I mean? Yeah. But people just not, people just not hygienic, but he, he never got a shower. But there was some girl called Rachel and she used to tell him every day. And then he used to go up. And I don't know, I, I'm sh- but every day he used to put gel on his ear. <laughs> Like and it, it was making his hair worse. It was his head. Oh, his head was probably greasy. And then, but yeah, when when I was in the care home, was just he was just it was madness. Like one time, all of us um got all everyone's beds together. We put all the beds. It was like it um we had a party. We went and got all the stuff out of the fridge. Yeah. Got all the we got all the beds in our room. We was having a party because this lad called um Rob. He was about to go to jail, and um. Yeah, we all had a party in me in my bedroom. Um, three yeah. beds, three lads. But on the other hand, that was the funny part. But on the other hand, it was like all my mates was an item. So like when I was in Kirby, it was like I was I was like jogging to item every day to go and see my mates. Yeah. Yeah. And like when I, I get the, like he had this bus ticket, it was out of date by like four months. Like yeah. I got it from the train. Uh, in the train station and the date was dead small so we used to just cover the cover the, like the train sign shower on the bus used to get down on the bus for like four months got caught <laughs> got caught the bus man took me took it off me so then one time I was at the train station and there was this um, there was this um, what's it called do you know a bike know a bike um, with all the bikes like rock, with the yeah. locks oh, in yeah. there yeah. well then there was this little shitty bike in there it was like do you know where the gears are not working? The gear sockets are out of the sockets <laughs> and everything. And um, I turned around, was looking around like that, thought, um, yeah, this bike's going to get me to writing. And the, <laughs> it, it, it was on a pan lock from Panland, pulled the lock, ragged it off, jumped on the bike. It had half a pedals and everything, just Kirby, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then it, it was just, I, I jumped on it, started dead in there, thought I can't go down Nosley Lane on this. It's going to yeah. take about three hours and I need to get to my mates within 45 minutes. Because this was like at nine at night anyway. Yeah. Turned around, 
thought the only the only thing I'm gonna have to do is hit the motorway. So or a bike, like an actual. Way, <laughs> so we hit, I hit the hard shoulder, and <laughs> <laughs> there was lorry, there was lorries coming down the, the motorway. Oh, it, it was the worst time of my life. I nearly died about five times. I nearly got nicked and everything. When I got down there. And when I got to Iton, got to Iton within like 22 minutes or something, sweating my head off, flying, giving it the lucky legs on the motorway <laughs> in the pitch black. And then got to Iton, and then all my mates went in like half an hour, half an hour later. So then he after the to um, walk back to Kirby after that. Yeah. That was probably the funniest time in my care home. Mm. But then I was, when I was, I was in that care home for three years, um, I had a girlfriend in there, and yeah. she ended up. I end up going, um, getting another girlfriend, like in between, but she didn't like it. So I had all Balenciagas and that, and she cut them up and burned them all. So yeah, she yeah. Was, yeah she, proper bunny boiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just like, it was just, it was just mad. So I just thought, you know what, I'm getting out of here. So we end up moving down the road to another care home, and um, there was a couple, there was a couple of lads in there, but like again, in care homes, if you. If you ever go and visit a care home, if you like, if you become one of them type people who yeah. Yeah. work with kids, if you go into care homes, like you will never find anyone with a clean room. Like everyone's just scruffy cunts. Like yeah. you'll turn around and you'll go, you'll go into the room and they just got things flown everywhere. The room stinks as shit, yeah. and then you are like, like they're just the type of care homes, but they just. I was the only one that was clean, but yeah. the, in this other care home that I went to, it was just like unhygienic again. So like through the whole like I was, I was four years I was in care for, four or five years, and that whole time like I was on seven pound every Saturday. That's all. Yeah. Or yeah. I, I was literally could only spend a pound a day to get a drink while I was out and I lived in Iton, so I was going out in Iton. So like. My struggle was when I was in night and it was sunny. All my mates could go out in the shorts and that. Yeah. I need to think about at night time when all them are comfy and I'm sitting there and I'm I'm like I'm in shorts for these and my wallets off. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. So I need to carry a big coat around with me every day, and then I after the sometimes I was just robbing shops and that just to get me scran. Yeah. And um, it was just like the when I, the way I live now. Um, all my flat done up. Like if you've looked at my Instagram when I yeah, put me, it, me yeah. gaff up the other day, like things like that, like make me proud. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just because yeah. when I was younger, I was on seven pound a week. All my mates was I was walking around Montclair coats. I was walking around in same pair of like clothes, the same pair of clothes, like every three days, four yeah. days, and then I weren't eating. I have yeah. to go to my mates and eat and now that I can do it on myself. Yeah. It like it makes it more interesting, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just and then I moved to it, um I moved back to Lighting after that. Um I end up moving in with her um uh um oh, what you a foster carer. I was with a foster carer at the very start when I was with my brother. Yeah. But they had favourites so I moved out. But um then I went to some foster place. Um, after these two care homes, um, Tom Honeyman, his name was, he was mm. boss. He was like dead scally, but he was yeah. like 65. He <laughs> yeah. was like one of the boys, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He used to, um, when I, I went, I was living there for about, about um, six, seven months. Mm. And then he ended up dying of cancer. So, but I was, I was dead young then. So, you know, he was like me dad. Yeah. But like when people are like you lose, oh, I will lost my mates when a bit when I was a bit younger when I was um fifteen. So before this, as all this is on top, all this care home stuff, yeah, and all this um like when I was on when I was a bit younger, I used to fight on the streets. Mm. So people coming after me, this the care home stuff, and then I had people dying in my family. Like my life was just crashing down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just one of them where. After me care, after me foster place, I end up going to it. I thinking I want to live on myself, so because yeah. I can do it all myself. So when we made dad and I was doing footy, and um, like I, in the academies and in all the academies, then me care home said I couldn't go footy anymore. So I um, end up taking up boxing. Um, I was like f- just before sixteen. Yeah, and um, 
end up turning around and just thinking, you know what, just give it a shot at life, and it's yeah. yeah. the only the only way forward. No point in being down. So I was in it. Um, a gaff in Toxteth, yeah. um, Smith Down Road, Toxteth way. Yeah. Um, but the lads were smoking spice and that in there. Yeah. Like you walk in, your nose and start burning and everything because they was just, they was like no little baggage from the streets. Yeah, but yeah. they lived in the semi independence and I got put in there. And then I was staying out and that I end up, um, I end up just staying in my mum's for a bit. And then I end up getting me, um, my own place when I was just before 16. When I, I, but at that time, like, it was good because I got my own place, had my first boxing match and knocked the lad out. And my yeah. dad's just got out of jail at yeah. this time because he only got four years and done two. Mm. And then just loads of things was just coming into place. So it was like bringing positivity, you know, all them bad yeah. years that he had. So I um, ended up turning around, getting a little moped, you know, one of them mopeds. Yeah. yeah. Um, flying around for a bit end up doing wheelies on the streets and all that, <laughs> just like thinking I was it when I weren't. And um end up getting my scooter took off me, end up getting six points on my licence already. And then um end up turning around and s- since then I've just, just been growing and just learning how to like do life on my own, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Why then, was it boxing over forty though? Because you did mention you were in like the academy, so you're obviously like relatively like, old. It went, like, since the age of six, like, I used to play football. I was a footy player from the age of six. And then I turned around, and me, when my dad went into jail, I was topping my game because my dad used to drill it into me yeah. and so on because my dad's my biggest inspiration, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, everything my dad does, I do. So when my dad was there, I used to play better. So yeah. when, I was, when I was younger, from the age of six, I was just a footy player up till... I was fifteen, and then the care home. When you go, like when you go in a care home, it's not like you think. Oh, it's funny and it's boss and it's this, but it's yeah. not like you have load like any person who goes into a care home, no matter what, if you're a good kid or you're a bad kid, you always come out of there with a criminal record. That's yeah. that's just Why the way you think it is. That is though, because like the the staff in there, like no when. In fact, it's not even the staff. It's like, no, your family, you're not seeing your family. That's on your brain. And then you've got, you're on, say you smoke, you need ciggies, you've got an habit. I didn't have an habit, so that was a good thing. So yeah. the people in our house, they used to be old in our walls and that because, like, they needed ciggies and they didn't have no money. And, like, mm-hmm. or, like, that lad, I used to fume because the lad didn't have a shower and then he's touching out my food or yeah. the, the house's food. And then... You get where, like, I had a girlfriend and then you turn around and you end up getting into a bit of bother or when you're out on the streets, you're always... you Like, when you're in a care home, you've always got a spotlight on you because yeah. the police know you, you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like, say you go missing, you can't stay out one day. You have to be home for, like, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. You can't stay out for one day, otherwise the police get rang and then they've got pictures of you. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're all over the police stations, like yeah. this this kid's missing this and that. So you're always in the spotlight. So when I was out, I become a leader in my mates just because I was the spotlight of the police officers, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was just like when I was playing footy, when I was um, when I was younger, as I was growing up, the care homes started saying that me... Um, my coaches I had like three four teams I was bouncing in and out of yeah. and he was saying my coaches are paedophiles and that yeah. just cause like cause my dad was in jail and say like if you're an older and you're seeing me like oh he's going through bad time yeah. and obviously I was at the time and then my coach was helping me out like buying yeah. top up to get in touch with family and this yeah. and that just the the care home was took me um, was saying they're taking me coach to court and that because he was a paedophile but he was where just where does that come from now like, like why he did out, he have that idea like because he was helping me out and like he used to let me stay in his yeah. with his son yeah. but they they only seen that there's a man come to pick a young lad up from yeah. the care home they don't see all the background where my coach was dead close with me dad you know what I mean so yeah. he's like a father figure isn't he really? yeah, yeah yeah that's what I mean so like that's how football come across I was I was in an academy and that and then um, they started saying that um, me care home um, me care home started saying that me coach is a paedophile 
So mm. my coach is like, I can't come and get you. And then some days I didn't go to footy. And then some days I'll have to like, get the bus to football and that. So it was a bit of a hard work. And at yeah. the time... I didn't have the dedication to do what all my head was baffled with everything. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, there was a lad called um, Andy Robinson and um, he was me one-to-one -one just because I was just a mad kid when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. And um, he turned around and said, um, there's a boxing club there. When I was younger, when I lived, it's down the road from like where I grew up, Ilsad. So when I was younger, I um, I started... I started going to this boxing club when I was younger, only young though, and didn't take it serious. And then when I moved to Kirby, I started Kirby when I was up there for six months with my dad before he went to jail. But um, this Andy Robinson turned around to me and said, um, do you want to come to boxing? So I thought, yeah, I'd play footy. And I used to fight on the street, so I thought, yeah. I'll about to give it another go, which I made up a dig because it's got me further than what I was. So... We done the old sprints the first day, and I was the first one up the hill all the time. And he said, um, he was like, um, you're a, you've got good fitness and that. So we started sparring, and I was sparring a few of the big lads. And because I'm small and stocky, I was giving it a good go. Yeah. And because yeah. I was fighting, like, where police weren't coming after me or this or that, I thought, you know what, this is all right. So me mate dad, and then... Me mate used to say when I was in boxing, like, you're going to become a champion. That's so since then I just thought, you know what, just let's go in it. Just that's what I like drive you on the force. Yeah, so yeah. like, me mate was like, he wanted to be like the artist and that. And he used to turn around and say, you're going to become a champion in boxing. And because um, we used to fight on the streets and all that, we used to like bounce off each other. Yeah. So when he died, the force like basically he was my partner you know what i mean so yeah. he he went and then i thought you know what i'm just gonna go into boxing and just see how it goes so since then like i was sparring a few of the lads in the gym like beating them up and that and he was a, a bit younger but he was bigger than me mm. and like not i was beating them up but i weren't beating them up like i was i was getting the best of them you know what i mean yeah. And then I had my first fight. My dad just got out of jail. I had my first fight. Turned around. Turned around and um, went. My dad come and he was um, there was just loads of birds like on the edge. <laughs> and I, like I didn't. I thought you know where like I don't know if you know, but when you're in like a sport like now, like I watch on the telly and like even Lomachenko's the pound for pound and this and that. Mm -hmm. Or, like, the Floyd Mayweather's. Like, you have to have the confidence in yourself where, like, say he's in the ring and he's um, and he's boxing. I'm like, I can beat him. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. when these birds, all these birds is on the edge, and I thought, you know what? Like, my dad just got out of jail and this and that. So I was dead cocky and dead mm. confidence. And then these girls was there because he had muscles and that. <laughs> I thought, I can't just get in the ring and get, get fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I when I got in the ring, I was getting I was getting beat, and then I was I was just hitting them with a couple of rights. If you haven't seen them, my Instagram, and then I just whacked them with the rights and just put them a kip. He was, a, he was a, <laughs> I was only fifteen, like, and I thought, yeah, that that's boss. All the birds is clapping, and then the thought is like, there was a few few nice girls there and that, and um, I thought, yeah, this is this is the way forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of doing it on the streets, and then. Since then, I just started having fights, and then because I was knocking people and knocked one out, and then I was like giving people standing counts, like yeah, yeah. for the ref to count and that. Then I was um, every every fight I was having, people was coming just saying um, knock him out, knock him out, this yeah. that, this that, so forth. And then that's why I was losing a few because I was just going mad in the ring, just because I was trying to knock them out and, and please everyone. Yeah. But now that um, I'm a professional, like everyone's gone like all them people are not there anymore you know just because i'm not knocking people yeah, out yeah, anymore yeah. just because i was getting beat sometimes and sometimes i won but i got beat more times than a lot than i won so all them are not around anymore so thoughts well users only around just because i was knocking people out and yeah. and this and that so now i realize that like do it for yourself like if you don't do it for anyone else, do it for yourself, you know what I mean? That's the problem with boxing, isn't it, though? People, like, think it fighting and boxing is different, isn't it? Yeah. Because obviously you know more than us, but, like... So when I was when I was fighting on the streets, I was um, 
like even I look back now and I look back at like you know when I first started boxing and I was like a stiff board but I used to win all my fights on the streets and I don't know how like now I would just be blitzing people on, on the streets even though it's different like boxing but yeah. boxing makes you a better fighter and obviously your stamina and this and that but um, if I was on the streets now it would would be a lot better because I was like I was like an, um, an iron board when I was back in the day you know what I mean yeah. but I don't even know how like as I've been progressing it's just turned out like it's I don't know it's just street fighting is totally different yeah. like it's just mad the way like it's the it's the same fighting as well in it like but it's just totally different in like and I don't I don't even know how to describe it to be honest like how does like the turn around come from like being an amateur to a pro how did that come about well um I was in an ABC and um like all on my Instagram like when I do lives all kids are like saying um you can't go pro you shit you this and yeah. that so um when I was in the amateurs, like, I weren't dedicated whatsoever. So, like, you know, with family problems and, and, and like, still now, like, even though we have my own gaff and, like, it's, like, it's positive in life. Everything in my life now is positive. Mm-hmm. I'm still always having thoughts and, like, my head where, like, like, I'll never get to live with my family again. Like, my eight brothers and sisters that I was living with. Yeah. And I can't, like, live with my dad again or my mum, like, together, you know what I mean? So, like, all still negative stuff, still. But um, like when I was I left Titan, like to obviously progress in my boxing, I was gonna stay amateur for um another seventeen months um till I turned twenty one, and I went to Molly Macstan for a session, and that um the session I just felt I felt well better, so I I spoke with Smogger John Smith, my coach now, mm. and. Everyone says to me that I have a pro style, even though experience is key. But if you look at like the the type of like Sam Eggington, and you look at the type of like um, Dillian White, yeah. who's in the top ten of the heavyweights, they only had he only Dillian White only had nine amateur fights. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and Johnny Nelson, he didn't have much, and Rocky Marciano, he only had like I think twelve or nine or something like that. So. Everyone says experience is key, but with me having a pro style now and I've got nothing in life, like I live on myself and um, I want to take boxing up as a career, so I thought I might as well like, give it a shot now, you know what I mean, and just mm. just start off and just see where I go, which I reckon I'll go all the way, to, to be honest. Where, where do you see yourself going then? Like, I'll definitely be on Sky, Sky Sports, that's where I wanna. That's the platform where I wanna be. Like in the next three three years, yeah. I wanna be on Sky Sports and I wanna start moving my way up and start winning belts. But I'm. I've got a eight. Well, I've got eleven now. I've got eleven brothers and sisters and a mum and dad to look after. You know what I mean? Like it's that part of life. We're not yeah. a rich family, so like having eleven brothers and sisters and like sometimes my brother needs money or my sister needs money and like yeah. sometimes they haven't got the things they want. Yeah. So. I'm I'm in the gym every day, um, in the mornings and working my ass off just uh, for the whole family to have a better life. Plus, my dream is all like my brothers and sisters to live in the same house for, even if it's a week. Yeah. At least we still get to live with it, each other mm-hmm. again. You know what I mean? So, say I buy a mansion, all of us can just camp yeah. in there for a week or two, and it's just it'll just make me dream. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. one of my dreams to look after my family and to try and get, like, to sh- secure my mum to make her have a better life, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I think that as well. Like, it must be, like, one of the most rewarding things, mustn't it? Like, giving back to your like, family. with my mum, because my mum had eight kids and my dad, and she was with them for 22 years, like, when my dad was cheating on her, and, um, and turned around, and now she sits there, and some days she just sleeps, just because, like, she she doesn't have a life yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like all her life her, her kids like in a matter of like not even a week uh, a boyfriend cheated on her after 22 years that she's got eight kids too and then she turned around and lost eight kids that she'll never be living with again you know mm-hmm. what I mean so mm-hmm. like looking at that and thinking that's why I'm trying to drive and that now just to 
go and grab me mum and take her out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like to make things, like, I would say I'm the joint in the family, like, I try and I'm like the one with the brain, you know what I mean? Like, all my brothers smoke, my sisters, and I'm the one sitting there, I've never smoked. And yeah. like, all them spend their money on daft stuff, and then I'm sitting here trying to build it up just to sort them out, you know what I mean? So, like, but like, when I was in a care home and the way my life's planned out, like, um, it's made me that type of person, you know what I mean? So I'm made up of had the life I've had. Like, obviously your lives have probably been different to mine, but yeah. it's made me become a man and it's made yeah. me, like, say, if people get if people are using their mum's bank cards and this and that to buy stuff, then you get knocked down and you get told you have to live on your own. Yeah. They won't be able to cope with well, the if I get through the deep end. I'll be able to survive, you know what I mean? It's so, mad, like, saying you live by yourself at 15. That's what that's I mean. That's crazy to me. But, like, all my mates, looking at all my mates now, like, when I used to look at them when I was younger, they used to, um, they used to say that, they used to, like, boast about having grand coats and that, and now they're sitting there, like, oh, I love to have my own gaff and that, so I've got yeah. the things that they want now. Yeah. And, like, I used to look at them thinking, you've got things that I haven't got, and then, so working my way up and the way people slate slate me and like hate on me they actually don't know the background of like why is that though or why do you think they like hate on you and that because i don't i don't know if i'm right but i've only been boxing three years and my coach who's an experienced coach has turned around and said i'm i'm capable of turning pro now yeah and not many people can turn pro after only boxing for three years because i'm a natural natural talent so they look at me probably thinking that I've knocked someone out when I was 15 years of age. I'm natural muscly. Um, um, and they probably think that they're going to go far. So they'll try and say stuff about my family or say my dad's done this and this and that. So trying to knock me down. But since I was younger, I've always had, like, I've always had people saying that or uh, look at your coat, or look at this, or look at that. So I've always had it, so it's not going to affect, you know what I mean? And because of being low anyway, like, and I'm at, at the, I've achieved anyway in life, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I live on myself, and when, like when I was saying, when I was younger, when I was on £7, an hour, uh, £7 a week every Saturday. Um, so uh, when I was then, I was looking back thinking, five years from now, I want to have my own gaff, and I want to, be able to invite my brothers around and watch the Liverpool on my telly yeah, and yeah. and like get a boxing night and ours, you know what I mean? And I'm at that point now where I can do that. Yeah. And like five years ago, I was dreaming of that. So yeah. now, five years from now, something that I'm dreaming about now, I know in my head because I've dreamed something and I've got it. Yeah. I know that if I say I'm going to be world champion in five years from now, I've, th- I've already done something that I wanted to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in five years, I'll be like, well, if I thought it back in the day that I want my own gaff and I want this and that and I've got it now, why can't I think something else? And yeah, yeah. Have you ever watched Bugsy Malone's? Um, have you seen uh, the inspirational story? Like right. he says, and he says like, all po- if you think positive, positive stuff will come. So on the treadmill, if you think positive, positive um, things will start dropping off the Did positive you use that treadmill. Now? Like that's what I mean. So, like, stuff, yeah. when I was younger, I used to be positive about it. So, when I got put in care, they, t- they turned around and was trying to knock me down. Like, say, the staff sometimes was trying to make me angry or this or that. But I just thought it's like a jail sentence, just sorted out. I used to go home every night, get up in the morning, get out. Mm. And then that, that was my day. And then I'll come home, get my head down, just use it as like a bread and breakfast, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I just used it as like a jail sentence. And then like use my brain where other kids they'll start going insane where like they're not seeing a family or this or that but I thought instead of getting taken away very far at least I'm I'm close to my family because I was still sneaking to see my yeah. family and that yeah. so we're not allowed to see your family no nah well I, I, I reckon I've had it the hardest out of my brothers and sisters because none of me own, like my other brothers and sisters all lived with my family yeah like my little brother and sister now like are of my eight the proper the proper eight like yeah. my dad's got other kids, but I don't have real eight. Um, my little brother and sister are still in foster care. So, like, when I was when I was in a care home and that, like our auntie, he he had a baby and he had 
his he had a beard and that's how he had his own place. Mm. But our Kaylee, she was she she got her own place at the time and our Lewis lived with family. Our John lived with me nan and then our Bobby stay, was living in his school at the time. But then um he ended up moving in with me dad. So we they was all living with family and then I'm sitting here in like a care home thinking like Know what I mean? Like they they were seeing me fa- me family on daily basis, yeah. but then we used to have contact with me family, but because when I used to go and I used to get excited and used to like because I'm seeing me little brothers and sisters and seeing me other family like that I don't really see that much, um like I was getting a bit too excited and then he said because I'm wild and I'm getting all the other kids wild, like I'm not allowed to see them. So yeah. there was some times where I never seen me brothers and sisters for like a year and it's cruel, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? At the age of thirteen, though, you know what I mean? It's not like, your fault. You don't care, is it? That's harsh, though. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. So like now we're having a brain. Like over us are older, so we we know what we're doing now. But when you're thirteen and like you get took away from your family and like you're trying to survive on your own, and then like I said, you've got people in the care home who don't get baths and you're not eating mm. and and this and that, and then it's going bad in school, then your life's just breaking down. I feel like there's not enough help for like That's what like I mean. That. Like, your life's breaking down, which, if that happens when you're older, it'll be all right, but at a 13-year-old boy or 14 or 15, it's it's just, it's not yeah, a nice place to be, you know what I mean? Your fortune, mind and everything, isn't it? That's that what age? I mean, like, it's not a nice place to be in. For me to actually get over that, and like, because a lad who was... A few of the la- girls and lads in my care on one's got kids living on herself, so she hasn't got a life. She's only got a kid. Yeah. Um. Two lads are in jail. Um. One of the one of the two girls are being sectioned, so I'm the only one out of them care homes who've like who's doing something good good with me life. You know what yeah. I mean? So, mm. like, I'm proud about that as well. And like seeing that, I can help my family out now is making me drive more into boxing where, like, I can make my family have a better life. And, like, in my head, I know I'm going to be world champion. I know I'm going to be rich to sort my family out. So that's just the goal, if you know what I mean. I think it's like what you're saying. I want to be rich, but for my family. A lot of people just want to be rich because, as we were just talking about, like, we talk about it, don't we? Like, the coats, like, expensive stuff and that, but, like, it doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah, but, like... Andy Andy Robinson, who took me into boxing, even now, he'll message me and or if I need a lift, he'll take me there. Like, I do have people in my life like Andy Robinson, Richie, my mates, all my coaches, all my coaches help me out. Like, if I needed something, they'll help me out and uh, now. So bring having people around me like that is making me make me want to do it for them as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, there's a lot of people to do it for. And obviously to do it for myself as well. So looking back at it, it's like it's been a bumpy road, but I'm like made up that my life has been the way it is, you know what I mean? Just because the person I am, I'm like I'll never ever be able to be get defeated, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because I've been at the lowest at a young age that not many people... Like people might be living with the mum and dad and like might not be rich and might only have a certain amount for food or get this, only get, like, all right clothes and that. Yeah. But with me, I've, I would say I've, it's another level above, innit? Like, yeah. being in care homes, getting took away, and then just trying to build yourself up, and you're always getting knocked down. So, so it's so been How do you right. feel like you'd, like, react to, say, say if you're, you, you haven't had your first fight, have you progressed? Nah, nah. Say if you got beaten, nah, how do you think you'd react to that? Well... I've took, I've had losses in the amateurs, and as a look, like I'm all every time, I'm always listening to motivation videos and that. You know, just because obviously I need experience still. I'm learning my craft as I'm going. Yeah. yeah. So, like when I'm listening to these motivation videos, and then I see people like say on Sky who who've lost, like say Charlie Edwards. Charlie yeah, yeah. Edwards has lost lost his fight. And then now he's coming back for another try. So there's always another try out there. And there's always... I always believe everything happens for a reason. So, like, if something happens, then 
something's watching over us, something like that, where like it's gonna open a new door for you and it's gonna be better. Yeah. Like I played this game on poker. I played poker, like only black chips, not real money. Yeah. yeah. And I've got loads of money, and then I lose loads of it, and then before you know it. I've got double the amount that he had. So yeah. I'm like, that I, I lost that hand just because it was going to give me a lot more money, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. just like little things like that. Like, if you something happens, it's just because something better is going to come. And even when I was younger, something bad happened and it was to make the person he am, yeah. if you know what I mean? So if I get a loss, which I'm not going to lose, but if I do get a loss, then it it's obviously... It's happened for a reason, you know what I mean? When do you reckon your first professional fight will be? Well, the second win, the COVID's going to come, in it. Yeah. So, mm. with, with me and my my manager's company, like, we need fans there. Yeah. Like, we, like on telly, you don't need fans there because obviously everyone's going to be paying and watching yeah. on Sky and that. But with us, we don't have a channel like that, so we have to, like, get fans like yeah. otherwise we can't fight so unless the fans are allowed in the stage or in the crowd yeah. then there'd be no fights happening whatsoever yeah. which, frustrating, yeah. that which it's it is frustration but it's it's all right because i'm only 19 yeah. so i've got loads of time and it's i'm learning now so I'm learning new new things. So say like yeah, I did have my first fight and then I come short with not enough experience by fighting a journeyman who's had loads of fights. Even though he's a journeyman, he's still mm. got loads of experience and he knows yeah. little little things. So me learning now, I'm learning more things to go into my first fight. So it's benefiting. It is benefiting me in a way, if you know what I mean. Like in everything, you have to look at the positive, don't you? Yeah. So. I'm learning over these next... I'll probably fight after Christmas or if I get in the show before Christmas, then Sam, but these next four months or three months, I'll be I'll be learning. I, I'm learning as I'm going, so I'll be going into the fight. If we had a fight now and in three months' time, I'll be better in three months' time because yeah. I've learned more things. So over these next four months, I'll be learning more things, you know what I mean? So Who you like? Who's like, who just said the best person your spot is? If you're allowed to like, so um, yeah. probably Josh Cully just because he was a southpaw. Like with southpaws, if you're an orthodox and you're a, and you're fighting southpaws, it's it's hard because yeah. you only need to make the slight mistake or don't move your head, mm. and because you're facing this way and your face is right in front of his left hand, mm. he can just. It, with southpaws, they can just take your right down the middle, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, with orthodox, they need to try and roll and get the punches in. But with southpaws, because they're the total opposite feeting, they, they're strong hands right in front of your face, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, probably Josh Cully's the, the, be, the best that I've sparred, like. Which you haven't sparred that many, just because in my old gym, we didn't really go and do spar and mm. spar them, but... While I'm a pro now, we've got no fights coming up, so it's not like intense training. It's just taking over and learning new things, and yeah. obviously just staying fit. But once I get, once I start fighting and that, then I'll start getting better, better sparring. But I've spoke with um, oh, what's his name? Beef weight is it? Who ah, it that um, he fights Sonny Edwards. Yeah, no, 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 for the no, no, no. English title and dropped him in the fit in one of the rounds. Well, I I spoke to him on Instagram and he said um, he'll come and spar me. So. Is that how it works? Yeah, you literally just message him and say you want to come for a spar. Well, it has to be similar weights, but yeah. like if if like obviously your coach is speaking, like say I've got more experience than that that fighter or this or that, then you just balance it out and long as both years are learning or getting the fitness in, then it'll be signed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just the way boxing goes. I like to talk about, you know, like, obviously you said you're from Heighton. There's quite a lot of, like, not even just, like, fighters, even footballers and that. Yeah. They're mostly from that area, like Peter E, Gerard, Tilt, they're all from there. What do you think it is about that area that makes everyone so good? 
Moet je just aad aan me. Moet je just aad as fuck. That's what it is. Just because I'm from there, but just say where the, where the artist, like... Titans the hardest in Liverpool, that's it. We're just the hardest, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, say if you look at Gerard on a football pitch, like, he's the one that's just there ready to, to have it, you know what I mean? It's just, it's even in Liverpool, in fact, it's like, we just got it in our bodies, you know what mm. I mean? But it just turns out that, that there's some special people that have come from Titan. Like, yeah. uh, even in boxing and that, like you were saying, but... We're just hard, aren't we? <laughs> that's that's it. Just people in general, in fact, just people from Liverpool. We're just solid. We're just not bothered. Like that's why everyone loves us. Like, but some people do hate us just because we're cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> but we're just we're not bothered whatsoever. We're just like Irish people, aren't we? <laughs> I kind of mad. It, it, it's like that, though, isn't it? Like the Irish, like loads of them are always fighters, or they're just hard <laughs> in general. You don't care. Do you? Like, <laughs> nah, I reckon we're behind the Irish, like, but. I reckon we're up there with one of, one of the hardest out there. Easy. Even, like, it's it's good that we actually, like, we all come together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's Close mad that yeah. if you was on holiday and I seen you on holiday, I'd go, he's a scouser him. And yeah. it's just mad the way we can, we all just, just know. Point. But if you're on holiday, in fact, it's just, like, you could argue with people around here, but when you're on holiday, you just all gather up and just, because you said it, it's yeah. not like... Say in Liverpool, like, there's just Liverpools everywhere, but on Aldi, if there's, like, two Liverpools, even if they had a little argument back in the day, they'll group up just because there's not that many there, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just to try and make a group. So, just, scouts are just sick. I find that, in uni and that, don't you hear someone's a scout, you're like, oh, you know what I mean? It, it's all different. you have to see is just one sends or something, and then you just know <laughs> that they're a scout. It's the way, it's the way forward, but... Yeah, Scouse, is it? Uh, is Darren Till from Aiton? Yeah, I'm sure he is, you know. Might be wrong, like, if anyone <laughs> starts commenting on that. But, like, I think he is, yeah. I don't know, but I know, um, What Who was it, Reed? Peter, Peter Reed. Reed play for Everton, yeah. Well, my mate, um, my mate's a barber, and um, he got Peter Reed and Stephen Gerrard on the side of his barber shop to belt yeah. like. But. It's just Aiton for. It, in fact, have you seen the picture where it says, um, why do why do most most people come from it and they come and it's come all up all um like the professionals all the names, yeah. and and it shows like the it saying it's mad like it's mad there's nowhere else in Liverpool is it well there obviously it's, is other areas the, but like there is if you think about it there's not that many areas in Liverpool that like have had like quite a few people coming from there yeah. to to the top level is they to to be honest like Anthony Fowler he's he's probably the only one out of Talk stuff, any? Yeah, he's from around here, isn't he? Yeah, and then you've got. I don't think Darren Sills from Aiton, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Something's telling me that he's. I don't know. It says on Google he was born in Nuneaton, which is in Warwick. Till? Warrington? He was born in Warrington? No, no, Warwickshire. No, no way. He was born in Nuneaton in Warwickshire, it says. My head <laughs> fell off there, you know. I thought he was born in Aiton as well. Nah, <laughs> I didn't know he was. Didn't know if he was born in Aiton, like, you know. F- f- Definitely thought he was born in Liverpool. I know, yeah. That's what I thought. So that's out of Liverpool. That's just Wikipedia for you. That's like miles away, though. Nah, Warwickshire. I reckon that's lying. Nah, that's, that can't be <laughs> like that. Born in Nuneaton, England. That's Where's like that? Warwickshire. Like Where, Birmingham where is way, innit, that? Is it? Midlands, yeah. <laughs> nah, ne- surely Needs to give Till a phone call later and ask him about that. <laughs> <laughs> Get his number West later. Midlands, <laughs> yeah. Until he was probably born there and then moved to Liverpool when he was very yeah. Yeah. I would assume. Surely. He's, he's, got a thick he's still not from Liverpool then, is he? <laughs> You've got <laughs> Bellew, haven't you, as well? He's from, like, Wave 3 Soccer Fair here, isn't he? I think around here as well. Bellew's sick, isn't he? Yeah. Just, just we not... had Shaq on as well, didn't we? Yeah. And he's from Soccer oh, yeah. as well. So. Nah, but... They are, obviously... Like, they be climbing up, but they haven't, hopefully... But they haven't got to like levels like them, like the people from I and have you know mm. what I mean? So like Peter Reed, yeah. Most loads of people know about Peter Reed and Steven Gerrard and um, say. But they have got to the top, haven't they? As well, he played for England. He played in Wales. That's Cups. what I mean. So it it would be good if like people like Shaq and Fall and all that all become big, big like because obviously it's our city. Get behind them, yeah. but it is actually mad that. 
the most people in Liverpool have come from Iton, like, don't, don't really look into that, do you? You yeah. don't sit there and just think, oh, yeah, I'm going to look on um, Google today and just <laughs> yeah. see, how, see how many people have come from Iton to the top. He grew up in Walton, it says. He grew up in Walton. Isn't Walton? He? Yeah. Uh, one time I was in Kenny, and um, I seen someone walking down the road in a towel. <laughs> no, no, he's told nah, me. some girl had it, like, you know where they go up to there? Yeah. He was walking around, like, down the streets in just a towel. <laughs> and, like, it was going, like, it was going dead slow. And I thought she might be going to, like, a neighbour's three doors down. She yeah. literally walked the whole road <laughs> in just a towel. Now. And I thought, wow, are you actually, are you actually being serious? Like, imagine that being your ma, you know what I mean? <laughs> you just run out and just pull up by your head back in the house. <laughs> Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, any questions before we wrap it up? Um, yeah, I have a few. Where would you say you want the like, dream fight to be? Um, Anfield, innit? Well, once, once all the four, like you know, the four sides are done, mm. then I would would love would love to box in Anfield. Like, hopefully, if like I climb my way up quick, yeah, I possibly like. Slide into like an undercard, you know, like Callum Smith and like Can I and that? Do you can happen? Um, well, if you I put up on um, me story before, Smith, Liam was saying that if fight don't happen anytime soon, he reckons Callum will walk away from the sport, then he really, yeah. So, something I don't know why it doesn't happen, it's just all about money, isn't it? Canelo's it's business, just, isn't it? Canelo's just a big time, isn't he? He just and probably. Uh, no one knows, but Eddie A might be thinking that Callum might get beaten, then there's him down the pecking order or mm. something like that, you know mm. what I mean? So it's just one of them. Like, we don't, we only see what they allow us to see. Like, behind the scenes, yeah. there's a lot more. Like, there's a lot more in the in the business, you know what I mean? Yeah, and also, um, what song would you come on to? <laughs> um. Uh, I was thinking about, well, I, w- I was, when I was younger, I was looking at Ain't No Stopping Us Now. Just yeah. It, it's just Doesn't David A come David out David A that, comes yeah. out of that, but I was thinking about coming out today and Ain't No Stopping Us Now. And then, but then now I'm changing my mind. You know when, you know when new songs come out and you think, yeah, I'll have that. Yeah. Like with me, like, I only like, like songs where like, if like, they mean something in my life or, in the in the song like something's happened in my life that yeah. reminds me of that and I'm like yeah. oh yeah that's that's a good song so probably at the time I'll probably look into it and probably have a look and see what songs there's out there if you've got any suggestions yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, it is art. It, it like you think like just choosing the songs easy but yeah like that that little piece of song before you fight, like a little bit of. Gotta get you up for it. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Both. So like, I don't want to choose a song where like, um, Sweet Caroline. That doesn't get me <laughs> hyped. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just because, <laughs> just because other other boxers walk out to me and it's a boxing song. I don't want to be walking out to like Sweet Caroline. <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't even. It doesn't get me hyped or nothing. Yeah. I mm. want something that like I'm starting to like when I put songs on and as. If it gets me in a mood, I just start banging press ups and that out in ours and just start dancing around and trying to make, yeah, trying to make a good of the song, you know what I mean? So I don't want to be walking out where, like, the song just doesn't get me, like. What music are you into, like, and you listen to at the moment, you know? Anything. Yeah. Uh, like, I love Bob Dylan. Like, yeah, I'm, into, yeah. I'm into the old songs and then I'm into rap, like Cake Oak. Like, I speak with Cake Oak and that, and, like, I'm into his type of music and then. Um, I'm into. I'm not into you know party music that loads of beats. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I, I'm not into just because I've never been one of them. Like I've never took dogs or not, and so mm. or like I've never. I've ne- I don't really go out, so I'm not really like a party party head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just into like, like I said, I'm into songs where like if it means something in my life or mm. if it. It's a good song. Like Ed Sheeran's good. Like me say like me little brother and sister like sends a video with them dancing to like Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Like I like that song, you know what I yeah. mean? Just because yeah. me little brother and sister just like that. even though I think I'm hard, 
you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. inside, I'm like a little girl. Like, yeah. I'm like, no, we're one of them. We're like, the lads like saying stuff to his beer because everyone's there. Like, um, oh, shut up and that. Yeah. But then on the, when he goes in, he's trying to look at that, you know what I mean? I'm like that type of person. So, I'm like, yeah, it's songs when it comes to it, I'm like, uh, but like, <laughs> I listen to Ice Cream Musical. <laughs> like some some days some days I wake up and I'm like um, yeah put a little bit of Troy on today <laughs> but it gets me in a mood and in a boss mood and I'm like why am I like that like I could I'm chilling me bro- me brothers I'm listening to all rap music and all like what's happening on the streets and that yeah. and then I go home and I'm sitting there like listening to Grease and like Grease songs <laughs> and like high school musical songs and I'm like <laughs> Like, like what goes through your head to like you like just certain type of music don't you you yeah. don't like but yeah ice cream musicals up there like with one of them <laughs> top of the range do you want to ask the last yeah we always do this Sean um, what's your favourite pints I don't like pints I um, I drink pink gin pink gin yeah yeah um, I don't have singles though I only have to, I can only have doubles and I have to have lemonade in it but I'm not a big drinker, but like when me and dad the other day, um, I was on double pink gins from three in a day till twelve at night. Yeah. And I was absolutely blitzed. Woke up in the morning, looked at the side of my bed, like all my clothes is on the do you know where your clothes is like all scuffled, one leg is outside one yeah. leg. So I must have been fighting with myself trying to <laughs> just looking at my bed thinking I wanna jump in and then I'm turning around and then I must like I just in my head, I just got, I just want to get blitzed today, just, you know, just because it's a sad time and that. Yeah. So I just must have just got smashed and then he ended up arguing with my dad in the party. And then, it's because, like, my dad, my dad and his girlfriend, like, he doesn't really speak to us anymore, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just wanted to, like, talk to him about that. But then it just got out of hand and then uh, the, the party ended. Ended up going to the, um, to my auntie and Lee, auntie Lee and auntie Julie's um, house. And having a little bevy there and then going on, but I was I was blitzed. But yeah, pink gin's the one. Yeah. I, I used to I used to like Budweiser, but um one time I was um drinking in the Deans and um turned around and I was drinking from twelve in the day till eight at night. I only remember eight o'clock because we was playing Arsenal. Liverpool was playing Arsenal at the time. Turned around, woke up at like twelve in the toilet. Like sick old army, <laughs> everyone was saying you're all right, mate, and I felt proper. Like I'm one of them. I would have, like if it was so, would have walked out of the, out of the toilet, like buzzing, like making people laugh and that. But I felt proper the shame walking out. It was like, like you know the walk of shame when a girl yeah. comes around to yours and she has to get back off. I walked through the pub and everyone was just looking at me, and I, I was a kip in the toilet from eight o'clock at night till twelve because I got blitzed off Budweiser. So. <laughs> Would never drink Budweiser again. <laughs> it's horrible. And when I even when I smell him, like, nah, I don't want you. You're, you're scatty. You'll put me in two to keep you. <laughs> I'll stay away from that. But yeah, pink gin's the one. Nice. What's your favourite? Favourite gin or just favourite like alcohol? Favourite bevy. Oh. Do you drink much? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say mine's probably a pint of Peroni at the minute. That is nice, but I, I'm not gonna. I drink apple cider. Like Thatcher's Magnus and that. Nah, yeah, but pink gin's the one, double. But it, um, I can't have. What is it? Fruit or veg? Is it that goes in it? Oh, not yeah, veg. Is it? Yeah. 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 Like lemon. <laughs> not veg. <laughs> lemon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can't have that. In other words, I can't drink it. I'm like dead weird. Like, if my brain's telling me that I can't do it. Yeah. Like before I go to bed, you have to have my pillars and all that the same the same way, and I have to have. So like I'm I'm in bed ready to go to sleep. If my shoe is not next to the other one, or is it's not in my brain that yeah. it's right, I yeah. can't sleep, and I don't know. I must have been blitzed that night if I got home and my kex was having my kex was <laughs> everywhere and my tie. I would have put all them away, you know what I mean, or yeah. put them in the washing machine. But yeah, I must have been blitzed, but it was a boss <laughs> night anyway. It was a belter. Yeah, so uh, thanks very much for that, lad. Um, yeah, nice one. That was Jane Francis. We hope you enjoyed it. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, if you want a nice top like these, James is <laughs> top. Your beef yeah, is top. Sad. Go to Santino fashion. Thanks very much.